Good morning, everybody, and welcome back uh, to today's uh, morning session. Today's speaker is uh, Professor Dhiraj Kumar Hajra. He is already here for at least for one seminar, and all of you know him. So I'll not spend any time in introducing him once again, and I'll hand it over to Dhiraj uh, for the rest of the sessions. Thanks, Dr. Uh, okay, mm, uh, I have shared the uh, Google Doc link for four pages uh, uh, that I have prepared. We are going to try that in today's uh, session. Uh, what I'm going to do is that now, let me share my screen. All of you can see my screen, right? My screen is visible. Yes, yes. Yes, yes okay. So, uh, um, so there is nothing to read from this uh, our, this uh, these slides. Uh, there are only a couple of things that we need to uh, do. For example, we need to uh, first uh, go through this uh, Python notebook uh, where we have uh, discussed uh, this distances. Uh, we uh, yesterday we discussed the age uh, calculation of age, uh, then the distances, and also uh, uh, yeah the horizon problem, right? Uh, how you can calculate the angles. So uh, this uh, notebook contains that. Uh, some of you uh, mentioned to me, I think Orno mentioned that it is difficult to uh, uh, copy the files uh, from the uh, Sci Server uh, dashboard. So uh, if you are able to see my screen, I am in the Sci Server dashboard. What you have to do is that you need to click the compute, okay? Here, uh, the one that I am uh, circling, okay? You need to click the compute and then Okay, let me see if I can get a, no, I, unfortunately here the laser pointer is not coming, but I hope that you are able to see the compute, click on the compute, okay, you all of you, I guess, have uh, registered and uh, joined the Sci server, uh, and uh, it, it, then you go to the dashboard and click on compute. I'm going to wait for 10 seconds if, uh, to see if uh, others have been able to log in. Okay, are you able to log in and click on compute? If anybody haven't done, done so, please let me know. If anyone is facing difficulty, because now we are going to do it in the Sci server uh, portal. So it is important that uh, uh, we can, we have the access to all the resources. Okay, so compute part is there, right? Then you create a container, just give some name. For example, I have given a name of the container as codes for workshop ISI, okay? So you also create your own container. You give whatever name, A, B, C, D, whatever you want. All right. Then click on switch to Jupyter Lab. I think it is Jupiter, but many people say Jupiter. So let's. You can also write in that uh, Zoom dashboard to indicate if you are facing any problem. Let me see if I'm. Okay, while presenting, I think I'm not able to access the. Chat box. Okay, yes, chat is there. No messages, right? So all of you are able to do that. Good. Then click on terminal. You are doing it in the browser, so it doesn't matter whether you are using Mac or you are using uh, uh, Linux or Windows. So any system is going to work because it creates its own, okay. It is very, very slow. I do not know why. See, um, you do a LS, it is going to show you the folders that you have. 
you can create one folder okay so for example uh, there is a folder called workspace it's very slow If you go to workspace, I think you will be able to see storage and temporary. Don't use the temporary one because the temporary one is good for, I mean, big data analysis, but uh, uh, it is not backed up. So I think they clean up uh, this uh, temporary directory after some time. So if you need something to be stored in uh, for a long time, just keep the storage because the codes that we will be using doesn't require much uh, uh, space. So CD storage, then I go to CD Dhiraj. The server has an issue now, it's very slow. Okay. Then workshop ISI. So as you can see, this folder has been shared with you. So there are three folders: Dhiraj, Suru, and Tuhin. So you can go to the my. You can simply copy my folder into your workspace. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can do that. Wow, so slow. Okay, so there we are going to need Give me a second. I don't know why it is so slow. This is going to create a lot of problem. And this we fix it. Okay, I've switched to Firefox and it's just a problem of certain server or port, I believe. So here it seems that it is working fine. Okay, so you copy the whole uh, Dhiraj directory into your directory, okay? Uh, have you done that? So the way to do it is uh, this one. Whatever directory you are in, just paste this following command, okay? Some, it is showing no files. In the directory, okay. Two 
too long to copy. So that means that you are able to. Okay, so then uh, let's do it one by one. Let's just copy this one notebooks. Okay, and then we are going to do the rest. So let's see. So whatever directory you are in, if you want to copy this directory notebooks into your directory, the directory you are in now, so you need to paste this following command. Okay. Are you able to do that? You could have also done it. I mean, I could have also made it a tar file so that you could download in your own desktop. But the problem is that it is not uniform because some people, if some people doesn't have G Fortran or uh, the latest Python version in their uh, uh, laptops or desktops or uh, not Linux, Windows, Mac. There can be different problems. So since this is a uniform uh, platform, we can simply use that instead of relying on several machines okay so okay um please let me know if you have been able to copy it actually please let me know if any one of you have not been able to copy it. please write it down right now so that we can resolve that if we able we are able to resolve that unable to do okay uh, it is showing no files If you go to this CD, it is showing no files. Mm. No, no, inside your folder, you will not be able to find workshop ISI. The workshop ISI is in my folder, which I have shared it with the shared with the uh, participants. Okay. So uh, you will not be able to uh, see in your folder. That is why you need to copy your folder using this, uh, copy my folder using this command. You see, scp minus r means that you are copying your entire folder, entire directory, uh, which is under, we can copy the folder manually too, right? I mean, a GUI based format. I have not tried that. Let me see. The copy path. You see, the copy path is there. Copy shareable link. Okay. So well, I mean using the GUI, if you are able to copy, then it is fine. I mean, while creating the container, I think we need to include workshop ISI so that the container can access it. Okay. So Can anyone tell me because Tuhin also uh, uh, spoke yesterday. Uh, I haven't attended that. So Professor Tuhin Ghosh has discussed the uh, um, IPython notebook, right? Okay. I, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you can just open the uh, this server. I mean, Sci server and just open the workshop ISI and just uh, click copy there. Okay, so please follow. Yes, I am trying that, but that is taking too long. Yeah, yeah, it takes too long because the, there are a lot of files, but it gets copied there. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's not go to the, uh, I mean, you can do it after the class is over. I mean, the other files, uh, because the other files are actually very, uh, pretty, for example, plank likelihood is uh, a heavy file, right? Okay, um, heavy folder containing lots of files. Uh, today, we are going to need only these two folders, one is notebooks and one is inflation. Okay. So just copy these two folders, inflation and notebooks. So you can pause the copy that if you have been doing till now, and then just copy the inflation and notebooks. It is also fine if you are able to copy. Okay. I, I think I in the notebook. Yeah, for the notebook, I will need plank bf.py. 
theory constants dot py and th hyphen u one dot py. Okay, somebody is saying Rahul is okay. If you include okay, since I created workshop ISI, I didn't have to include anything, so I actually opened the container and then uh, created workshop ISI. So uh, if you think that if you include workshop ISI, it is it will work, then it's fine. But definitely copy all these things into your directory because so that it is going to run it in your uh, the server that you have been allot allotted to. Okay. So there are two options, either uh, the suggestion given by Rakul or I think Anubhav or Anirban who have Anubhav or Anirban who has said that. Uh, okay, Anubhav is in the top folder and copy option and uh, Anirban has been able to copy in the persistent. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so internet speed, uh, but uh, please copy just inflation and notebooks. Okay, so the command that I have given is for the notebooks only. So if, if we can, if you are able to copy the notebooks, we can start right now. Anyone who have not been able to copy the notebooks, please ping here. Everybody have been able to? Okay, okay, okay. Sure, I, I can wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, okay, so in the in in the meantime, let me just uh, uh, discuss. Uh, Ornob uh, had uh, has written to me today. Uh, I think yes, in the morning, as, uh, citing two example. One is uh, Mukhanov's paper of uh, showing that uh, uh, vector uh, particles can uh, uh, inflate the universe, and another paper. Uh, by uh, I forgot the author uh, from uh, HRI Harrison Research Institute, uh, showing that fermions can also uh, uh, inflate the universe uh, at the uh, early stage. Okay, so uh, uh, in those cases, if you see the Lagrangian, in both cases you can achieve it with a non-minimal coupling to gravity. Okay, so where R is coupled to the field itself, in the fermionic field case, it is a it is something like F capital psi where the cap capital psi is written as psi bar psi uh, for fermions. So the Lagrangian instead of R by 16 pi G in the Lagrangian, the, the, the Einstein Hilbert action, it is instead of R by 16 pi G minus the, 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 the scalar field uh, Lagrangian, it is scalar field or fermionic field Lagrangian, let's say it is coupled to R. So if capital psi, if as a function of capital psi times R. Okay. And also for, um, I think uh, the other case, uh, it is uh, it is also uh, coupled with the with R in a uh, um, coupled with R non-minimally. So if you have a non-minimal coupling to R, your theory changes. If your theory changes, then the expansion history and everything. So the uh, equation of motion and everything changes. So what I discussed yesterday is a simple scalar field with Einstein's gravity with a non-minimal coupling. Okay, if you go to probably modified gravity, some other things can also inflate some other uh, properties uh, of other I mean, properties with I mean, sorry, particles with other properties can also inflate the universe because the equations, the, the governing equation that expands the universe or contracts the universe, are going to change. Okay, uh, uh, so there, there can be I mean if you and in some cases you can add curvature and uh, you will be able to inflate with some other kind of uh, particle i guess uh, so in bouncing it happens uh, so what i would like to um, uh, but bouncing is also achieved by a scalar field if i'm not wrong uh, so the thing is that uh, yes you can achieve inflation with other uh, particles as well but you need to change your theory then okay then th whatever they are showing is that uh, in for example mukhanov's paper you will see that the uh, equation of uh, motion for the particle is just can be written just like the phi double dot plus 3h phi dot plus uh, dv d phi equal to zero. So uh, you need to change your action in such a way that your 
uh, your particles equation of motion looks like a scalar field equation of motion. If you are able to do that by changing your theory, you can do that. But another thing is that I have been able, I, I was trying that uh, the uh, paper from HRI is uh, on inflation and reheating, but they're just talking about background properties. If you are talking about background properties, that is not enough. So uh, then, as I said, you need 60 volts of inflation, probably in some cases, you will be able to get that as well with certain potential, but then also you need to um, generate the part additions. Okay, so those are important things that you need to generate. For example, it is inherently, you cannot also at the background level, you cannot uh, uh, expect a complete homogeneous and isotropic universe with a uh, vector fields, uh, but uh, 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 Mukhanov claims that in some other papers, it has been, okay, uh, he, uh, yeah, some other paper claim that uh, if you form a condensate, you can do that. So, uh, yeah, you have to increase the complexity of your theory and increase the complexity of the uh, uh, particle as well, uh, the degrees of freedom, uh, and then you can achieve that. If R L M gravity, uh, Arnav, can you share the paper uh, here? If Arnav yes, is okay, I'm sure. okay, please okay. share the paper in here, uh, both the papers. I would urge you to have a look at the uh, Mukhano paper. Okay, it is uh, I think um, more convincing, and it is also published. Okay, uh, so I think everybody have been able to copy, right? Should I start? Okay, so Rahul is saying that he will. Okay, somebody has copied it in my directory. Wow, <laughs> don't copy in my directory, please. Okay, let me see. Copy one dot i five nb. Okay. Okay, then simply double click. Okay, you just open this uh, Jup Jupiter lab, Jupiter lab, and then just simply open it. Double click and open it. So this is the. Let me I'm not able to so I have um, closed the chat window. So if there are any chat uh, any messages in the chat box, please inform me. Okay, if you are able to see that, please inform me. Or if you have any questions, just uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask me directly. Well, so um, let me tell you a few things. Uh, this actually is dependent on two files, two module files. See, I'm just opening a file and it is taking so much time. Come on, this file has 20 lines, I think. Okay, let's let's just uh, go ahead with this one. Uh, when they open, I'm going to show you. Okay, this uh, notebook contains the solution to the Friedman equations, uh, rate of expansion of the universe, age of the universe today, age at a particular rate shift, moving radial distance, uh, moving volume. Okay, volume I haven't calculated. You can calculate that. Um, angular diameter distance, uh, luminosity distance, and acceleration of the universe. Okay. And uh, the references are uh, Stephen Weinberg's Cosmology and uh, uh, Paddy's uh, Theoretical Astrophysics, Volume 3. And uh, there are some lecture notes uh, in Wayne, whose uh, uh, website, Wayne, whose website has lots of lecture notes. I think lots of quotes are also there. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, okay, another thing I would like to mention that uh, although I have uh, written the uh, quotes myself, but uh, you can also use uh, AstroPy library of Python 3. But uh, if, if you, let's say, if you say that my um, background parameters correspond to the best fit of Planck, et cetera, and then you just say that I'm using AstroPy, and the AstroPy, you tell AstroPy that calculate the luminosity distance at a particular redshift, it is going to give you that, okay? Uh, uh, but again, it is it happens in um, Python. Uh, if you, uh, for example, try to write a Fortran, 
um, uh, you will not be able to do that. So in that case, you have to uh, you have to prepare your own code. In uh, that is why bad gateway. Okay. What is bad gateway? Mm, yes, uh, so uh, here uh, all the mm, functions are written explicitly so that you will be able to use them uh, whenever you want. All right. And uh, okay. Uh, so this line is not needed. For example, as from Astropy cosmology, import Planck 15 as Cosmo means that you are using Planck 15's best fit values. All right. And uh, let me then show you the content. Oh, wow. LS is not working. Okay, good. Okay, one good thing is that we have uh, everything computed in the notebook. Well, so FRW metric is this one, as you can see, the quantity K can be plus one, zero, or minus. There are some messages. Okay. Notebook is still loading for me. It is taking too long, maybe because of internet speed. Okay. Okay. Server problem. Okay. Mm. Okay. Nice. Uh, then, okay. So let me tell you a few things. Uh, uh, yes. Maybe we are logged on. I mean, 40 people are logged on at the same time and server is not able to take the load. It should not be the case, uh, but uh, anyway it is happening so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you what i have done in this uh, notebook and then i would urge you to go through them uh, at your machine or log into this system at some other points of time i mean uh, and then it will work because i have run it in this system so it should not be a problem okay uh, so okay you know all know matplotlib there is no um, nothing to teach um, i need scipy to integrate and um, okay so theory constants are i are basically something that is all right it is killing me It's too bad. Okay, so uh, the age of the universe, I can just integrate the dt by dA. What is happening? I'm really sorry, guys. Um, I'm Deeraj, yes. Deeraj, if I may suggest, you can just uh, open the local notebook that you have, that you can have, uh, and present yes. us from there rather than running it online. Sure. Actually, yesterday I, um, uh, I, I uploaded that. I hope that I haven't made any other changes there. So this was unexpected. So yesterday when to, um, Professor Tuhin Ghosh had uh, displayed, there was any such problems or no? It was fine yesterday. It was fine yesterday, okay. So.
This is fine. We're able to see without an issue. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, you can add this notebook to G Drive so that you can we can download and work with our own Jupyter notebooks. Okay. Yeah, possibly the collab option was better. Mm. Or can I attach a file here in the Zoom link in the in the Zoom? I think the link can be shared. I can, right? So I have uh, shared three files with you. Uh, one is TIH EU one IPINB, one is constant.py and plankbf.py. Please keep all of them into a single directory and just open in your Jupyter lab or uh, um, Jupyter notebook, only the TIH EU one. And um, I'm going to also show what Lang BF and the other. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, Friedman equations are these, okay, h square and uh, that equates h square with the row and uh, h dot plus h square age of the universe you can simply get it from here so small age of z can be written as this hubble parameter at any time divided by the hubble parameter today and that there goes all the omega r omega matter omega k and omega lambda remember that um, uh, these are the values today the omega values today and where you can get these values uh, for example those values are written here okay uh, these are planck best fit i think i have used uh, planck 2018 best fits and I have written them as uh, some uh, constant values, uh, okay? And this also uses the constants uh, like pi, c, c in kilometers, uh, Thomson scattering cross-section, uh, Boltzmann constants, et cetera, et cetera, okay? You also need sometimes mega parsec to second, et cetera, in order to uh, go from one unit, unit to another unit, all right? So, all right, so DTDA lambda CDM and, uh, as you can see, I have simply defined the DTDA lambda CGM as this. Okay. Here, I have not yet discussed anything about the uh, rate shift. All right. I'm just talking about the scale factor because you don't actually need the notion of rate shift yet. So, as you see, I am defining this omega matter as the Planck best fits value of omega matter. Okay, and B means background, all right, in the, in this case, uh, sorry, B means baseline, I'm sorry. Uh, if you change the, uh, your model, your, your uh, uh, values, the base rate values will change. So this is for the baseline values uh, obtained from uh, the Planck uh, uh, analysis. I'm going to discuss what is a baseline and what are the, I mean, a different uh, Planck analysis in the next two lectures, all right? So you need omega matter, as you can see, omega matter you need, omega radiation you need here, omega L, omega lambda you need, and I am using this omega K 
um, as uh, zero, I am not using this omega k for here in this part. I am just using, uh, I'm just using the uh, notion that the universe is flat. And then uh, you see, uh, this is the integrand dtdl lambda cdm, okay? And what I have plotted is that I have uh, plotted the change in the scale factor with time. This is dt dA, all right? So when the universe was size zero, and when the universe was one, the size one, between the size zero and size one, if you integrate this, then the area under the curve is going to give you the uh, age of the universe. Uh, dependence on omega matter, as you can see, uh, dependence on omega matter is when you allow the omega matter to change when you are not using the Planck best fit. Uh, then it looks like this. For example, here I have plotted the omega, different values of omega matter, and in different colors I have plotted the dt by dA. All right. Here the integrand is one uh, written uh, once again uh, by that uses dt dL lambda cdm. It is uh, simply uh, a factor of a, and uh, all right. So as you can see, this factor A is there. Age of the universe can be calculated at an, any particular A using this formula. Okay. It is simply using a Romberg integration in order to integrate. See, this is dtda 0 to A. I am calculating the universe from when the universe had the size 0 and to at any size A. And if you want to integrate and get the age of the universe at any particular uh, at today, then you have to use a equal to one. All right. So you integrate this TTDA LCDM integrand and from zero to one, and then you change the units. For example, H naught has a unit of uh, kilometer per second per megaparsec. So first you change that uh, to seconds, megaparsec and kilometer. Uh, using the conversion from ego per second kilometer and uh, you also change the second because uh, mega per second kilometer both are uh, units of distances they are just uh, uh, going to be related they are just related by a constant factor you get that and then uh, from the second you uh, change your time unit to giga year okay and uh, the conversion factors are given here for example giga year is here giga year to seconds I have written here and when you calculate that you will see that the age of the universe today is 13.79 giga years okay any questions if you have been able to open it are you able to run it anybody who have not been able to run it please let me know I am getting some errors. Sure. that could not convert to the latex. Oh, okay, okay, good. But but uh, you uh, that error. But you were able to get the plots, is it? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, previous one. If you are, uh, you may have to install this uh, pip install latex or something like that. If uh, because I am using this latex symbols, as you can see. So. Okay, sir. Okay. Server is showing error, so nothing is opening. Uh, Bhaswati is saying that, and the Nilan the peep install plan. No, 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 no. Peep install plan BF is not working. Uh, plan BF I have already provided. You see plan BF dot py. Uh, yes, high server is not working, so uh, I, it is very unfortunate. So. Uh, you can simply download from the attachments that I sent in the Zoom chat box itself. So instead of trying the size server, because size server is showing problem for me as well. Size server, server time. No, 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 don't, don't try size server. Please, please uh, uh, just download the files that I sent here. Share those again. You, you can simply uh, uh, scroll uh, the ch uh, chat box. It is there. Uh, all the files are there. 
Zida, can you just scroll it up the chat box? Just open the chat box in the in the Zoom window. No, no, no. Where from you got logged out? You are not logged out from Zoom, right? Oh, you are not able to find the previous messages. Okay, okay, okay. That is an issue. Uh, okay, okay, I understand. So, so download this immediately, please. Okay, I'm just going to wait uh, one minute uh, and uh, I will expect uh, others response on whether they have been able to open it and run it. Okay, and in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead uh, with uh, my notebook. Okay, mm, uh, there are some assignments uh, that I have uh, uh, listed. Uh, I mean, again, I'm not going to ch check this assignments. These are for you. If you are able to do it, then it is really great that uh, you have, I mean, you are making your hands dirty with the, uh, uh, with the coding. Okay. And that is the main, uh, 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 I mean, main aim of this workshop that uh, you get some practical knowledge uh, on how to compare uh, with the data apart from just the theoretical uh, calculations okay so the assignments are reproduce this results discussed in this lecture uh, in any programming language you are comfortable with if somebody uh, okay somebody okay so it is working fine in local jupyter server okay um, so you can uh, reproduce these results and uh, in any programming language let's say you are familiar or comfortable with uh, matlab uh, mathematica fortran uh, and etc uh, you can just use that okay and uh, obtain the age of the universe when the scale factor was a equal to 1 by 1100 plus 1 that means 1 by 1 plus z where z equal to 1100 uh, you remember i discussed yesterday that uh, 1100 redshift is the redshift where the last scattering surface is located where the photon has last interacted with the matter this is the cmb surface so when where from where the photons are streaming towards us freely Okay, obtain the age of the universe as a function of the scale factor. You can do that very simply, uh, as I have shown that this is this integrand is, uh, for example, age of the universe. You can calculate it as a function of a. Just change the a and run it in a loop. Okay, so these are something that is uh, these are not uh, difficult. Okay, the only non-trivial part is that if the curvature density changes, how does the universe? How does the age change? Age of the universe change. So what you do is that here you have to change the equations. Okay, here you have to include the curvature omega k etc., and then uh, you have to also change the integrands, and then uh, uh, here you have to define the omega curvature, and then here for example omega matter omega lambda. Uh, okay, let me just see one thing. Mm, yeah, omega lambda is here defined as omega matter omega r omega k. Okay. Uh, here it is uh, omega k is completely zero as, for example here as you can see these are zero uh, but if it is uh, not zero then you can simply uh, go there and uh, change the integrand okay dtda lcdm for example see dtda lcdm is here all right okay so here i have okay no i have in, included this omega k you have to um, efficiently trade it with other parameters okay i'm not telling you how to do that um, so just see whether it is self-sufficient or you have to make uh, much changes so omega k is there and uh, you have to um, uh, trade it with let's say omega lambda or something like that so that you see that the rest part is treated as uh, omega k uh, remember there are uh, uh, let me uh, make another point here that if you uh, are uh, looking at other papers for example other papers or old notebooks they use a con uh, convention that 
the omega matter omega lambda omega neutrino etc adds up to one and the rest rest of the uh, amount is attributed to omega k okay this is one type of normalization but usually now what people do is that they say the total density is always one okay omega zero is always one which is summed over uh, i'm i'm coming back to nilanjan uh, 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 okay which is summed over of omega matter omega lambda omega k it's everything so um, it is always one so if your omega k is different from zero let's say this plus one or minus one your uh, omega zero remains constant one but your omega lambda or other uh, will change okay so you can choose uh, if you uh, let's say choose uh, omega k equal to uh, uh, some uh, uh, point zero zero one uh, you have you have to see that where from you can trade and depending on the observation in some cases you will be able to constrain omega matter uh, then it is fine in some cases the observations are uh, sensitive to omega baryon not just omega matter uh, just like for example if you talk about baryon acoustic oscillations or uh, cmb then uh, you have to uh, see how that goes okay uh, then you have to uh, run a full parameter space scan along with omega k. All right. Uh, yeah. Now I am defining rate shifts. Uh, now I'm I'm going to the uh, going to the distances. Defining rate shifts. And then age rate shift. For example, this is just a function. If you want to have the uh, if you want to have the uh, age of the universe um, for a given redshift, okay. And uh, as you can see, I have calculated it here. The age of the universe when the scale factor was 0.5, it was 5.84 giga years, okay. So you see, uh, 0.5 was uh, when uh, Z was uh, nearly two, uh, sorry, Z was uh, one, sorry, one, one by one plus Z. So Z was one. So it was nearly mat uh, the transition between the matter to the radiation, uh, dark energy dominated epoch. So you see the age of the universe was only 5.84, right? So nearly nine or eight uh, uh, giga years have passed between uh, redshift one and today, okay? So uh, you, you can see that uh, the scaling is completely different where if you are talking about redshift or if you are talking about years, okay? Uh, most of the years have spent in the we have spent in the uh, dark energy dominated epoch and age of the universe at rate shift 1100 uh, as you have seen uh, okay so this is uh, calculated here all right uh, just uh, calculate it in uh, for a given a uh, not a problem so you can see that i said it is 400000 years right you can see it is it's here age of the universe at rate shift 1100 was Three nine six six eight two point one one. Uh, one uh, simple uh, calculation I would urge you to do: just put uh, uh, omega radiation. Omega radiation uh, just to make you understand that how, what how important are these small numbers. Uh, I would urge you to put this omega R B. It, it is you see omega R B is um, omega R B H square is two point four seven into ten power minus five, right? Yesterday I discussed. Uh, okay, um, no, I didn't dis discuss that yesterday. I'm going to discuss in the, in the uh, next uh, lecture. So omega radiation uh, times h squared today is of the order of two point four seven into ten power minus five. I think uh, Professor Anjan Sen has discussed. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, so uh, Niranjan Dev has been able to solve the problem. Um, okay, so uh, you see, uh, omega matter is of the order of 31%, right? 31% of the universe is now filled with um, omega matter. So the rest part, if we say that omega k is uh, zero, then the rest part is attributed to omega uh, lambda or omega dark energy, which is nearly 69%. So one minus 31, uh, 100 minus 31%. Now think that uh, if I just put this omega r b h square to zero uh, today it doesn't matter at all and then try to calculate uh, try to calculate the age of the universe at redshift 1100 okay see if you are able to match this number okay and also uh, you see that the age of the universe at scale factor uh, 0.5 whether it changes much or it stays the same okay so there you will have an uh, 
idea of the order of magnitude estimation uh, that what component was important at what era okay uh, horizon uh, we had discussed horizon yesterday uh, proper distances and uh, the moving distances etc so uh, i have defined this conformal time d eta okay so we have to integrate this d eta so d eta is defined here uh, similarly omega k is defined here uh, here you have to do an non trivial step in order to if you change the if you change the curvature of the universe okay let me just uh, go ahead and uh, run this notebook Okay, so yesterday I mentioned in that slide, you just compare this slide with this uh, notebook. Uh, although this notebook contains all the equations, you don't have to, but uh, you can recap. You can have a recap with this. Okay, horizon today is 14.24 gigaparsec. Okay, if you change it with uh, light years, you can see that it is of the order of uh, uh, 45 uh, uh, light years, 40, uh, yeah, giga light years. Yeah, any, any, anyone was asking us anything? All right. Uh, horizon at redshift 1100 is ZCMB, for example, is uh, I have defined at 1100. Uh, proper horizon was 284.23 kiloparsec. Uh, evolution of proper horizon, how proper horizon changes with time. Co moving distance is when you take out the A factor. Angular diameter distance. This is the uh, definition. Luminosity distance we discussed again. And then theta horizon. You remember we have discussed that um, uh, the angle subtended from the Big Bang to the last scattering surface. Okay, the uh, horizon from Big Bang to the last scattering surface, the causal horizon, uh, the linear dimension, how much that subtends, how much angle that subtends to us. If you remember yesterday's lecture, we had uh, shown a figure uh, while discussing the horizon problem. And uh, as I said, if you change, if you just uh, do the calculation and change it from uh, radian to degrees, you will find that the theta horizon is 1.2879. So it means that nearly 1.29 degrees. So only 1.29 degrees is causally connected from the Big Bang to the last cutting surface. That was the uh, uh discussion of the horizon problem co-moving transverse distance uh, we don't have to go into detail here uh, these are distances between two uh, redshifts so all the distance measured together if you plot them it comes like this okay so this is co-moving distance this is angular diameter distance and this is the luminosity distance okay and uh, as you can see that if you have angular diameter distance, if you are trying to, uh, it has two values, okay. Uh, it, for example, uh, for the two, it has two values of redshift where the angular diameter distance are the same. Okay? So if you take one line cutting through both of them, so around the peak, you will, in all the cases, I mean, up to here, you will be able to find that uh, you have same angular diameter distance to two different objects, for different redshifts. Okay, this is something uh, problematic. So we needed some uh, better measure as we discussed, which is called luminosity distance. Okay, so this is what we use usually for the supernova, etc. Your assignments are uh, reproduce all the above in any language that you are comfortable with. Uh, get the angular diameter distance as a uh, distance variation as a function of omega matter. Obtain the distances in open and closed universe uh, with uh, variable curvature density ranging from minus 0 0.05 to plus 0 0.05, plot three distances as a function of redshift. Uh, calculate the horizon for a universe without dark energy and calculate the horizon for a universe without matter. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, Raghavendra and uh, a few others uh, have already attended my course last semester, last to last semester, and they have uh, gone through this calculation. But anyway, I would urge you to do it again if you have forgotten. 
uh, okay and uh, calculate the horizon uh, of, for universe without matter and calculate the deceleration of the universe for baseline cosmology this is what i am going to discuss anyway today yes any question no okay so in for horizon you have to calculate the h okay small h which is capital h of z divided by h not uh, and dh da and q is defined such as this okay for a particular cosmology you can write q as this and if you for baseline cosmology if you plot the deceleration parameter from the radiation nominated era till today you can see the evolution right so there are some questions that whether uh, uh, when uh, was the transition happening transition was happening in every stage because at all point of time matter was there uh, dark energy was there radiation was there it is when one becomes dominant or subdominant as you can see here the transition happens here okay from radiation dominated to matter dominated effort but you can see that it has started falling the radiation density started falling earlier and it has gone to the uh, matter dominator so these plateaus are basically for the dominance of uh, it is it, they are dictating the dominance of a particular species for example here it is dominated by radiation here it is dominated by uh, matter and here it is dominated by dark energy as you can see that this, this is a very smooth transaction this is uh, tran yeah, transition uh, so it is not uh, uh, a drastic uh, transition and you can see that it is nearly one here the deceleration parameter that means that we are decelerating during radiation nominated epoch uh, here we are decelerating but with a lower rate but at some point of time we change from deceleration around point around one redshift but below point one redshift as you can see we are still decelerating okay we have started accelerating when q goes to goes below zero okay and you can see it is going below zero and then it becomes negative so for a lambda dominated universe cosmological constant where it is lambda, uh, it is lambda uh, where, where you can basically say that uh, the dark energy is your cosmological constant then you can see that it is uh, decelerating with a, a q of minus 0.5 so it is plus point so it is minus 0.5 here plus 0.5 in matter dominated error and one in radiation dominated error all right now i would any questions with this one? No questions? All right. Everybody have been able to compute everything in this notebook please tell me because this is important to know if anybody have not been able to generate the thing is that yeah you, you can have problems in the latex symbols you can simply just remove that uh, latex part there and uh, also when you are plotting you can just get rid of those latex parts uh, for example here you don't need any latex uh, here also you don't need Actually, most of the cases you don't need. So you can get rid of those. Let me just. Okay, good, Rahul. All cells evaluated without any error. When I did it before the class today on Sci Server, right now I'm having issues with my local software, unfortunately. Okay, so 
uh, which in size server it was working. Uh, now I have given a link uh, of uh, of the code bingo. You can simply clone it in your repository. Simple changes might be needed. Have you been able to download the code? If no, then kindly let me know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there is one problem is that I had another uh, notebook where I had uh, created the plots, but size server is not responding, simply not responding. The massacre actually. Okay, Bhaswati, you can, uh, if you have the, uh, you are talking about bingo or you are talking about the uh, distance uh, calculator, the notebook, which one you are talking about? The notebook, okay, the notebook, you can also do it in your uh, local directory, no? If you just download it from the chat box, you can keep it in a folder and you can just open in Firefox on any browser, it should open, right? So here, as you can see, I'm just, just following the steps. You just copy this one and uh, very soon I'm going to share my terminal. Yeah, you cloned it from Git, for Git clone, that is fine. Okay, CD.
yeah there might be some temporary issue and site server might uh, my site server simply is refusing to open so let's not uh, rely on site server and uh, just do the git clone as i have uh, mentioned So the you just choose one directory in your machine and just paste this following command. Okay, so let me just stop the screen share from here. And share this screen instead. So once you are able to clone, you just go to CD Bingo, then CD Bingo 2.0. Okay. You just have to change the thing in the make file. If you are using i4, then you need to use QOpenMP or simply just remove this OpenMP. Okay. and uh, open the presentation uh, page three okay where i have written the structure of bingo the presentation that is uh, shared with you Okay, so let me just discuss if you are able to see the presentation, uh, the structure of Bingo. Uh, you see, uh, it, the, this is the code structure, okay? Then the central part, there is this, um, we have Bingo, and uh, that is the main driver of the code. Uh, it's uh, called driver.f90. I'm going to show the different parts of the code. And uh, parameters, the, each model, the code works for different models. You have to create a model folder. There are some example uh, specimen model folders that are provided already, uh, and uh, each model folder contains three, uh, three or four files. Uh, one of them is parameters.ini, okay, fnl params.ini. In that parameters file, I am going to show what param these parameters files are. Um, in that parameter file, you have different parameters of the for the potential, etc. And uh, what you need to do is that uh, you need to tweak this parameter or change this parameter and then see how the power spectrum or the background evolution goes. Okay. Okay. There is something in the chat box. Can you please show what is the change you did and the make file? Just open the make file and you see, okay. Make file. Uh, you see uh, i4 compiler 11 or later assuming MPI F90 points to i4. It is if you are using Intel Fortran compiler, okay, only if you're using Intel Fortran compiler, then F90C is MPI F90, F flags instead of OpenMP minus OpenMP, I have just added a Q OpenMP, or you can simply remove this minus OpenMP from your, uh, from the phrase, okay. If you are using G Fortran, uh, you can or if you're using gfortran simply just uh, let, let us assume that all of are using free softwares uh, so let me just switch to gfortran okay is it clear i have just commented the intel fortran and then i'm going to, i have added this gfortran okay uncommented the gfortran Clear? Yeah, increase the front somehow, I understand. I tried that, it didn't work. 
I said, okay, let me see. Okay. It is not increasing the fonts. Terminal preferences. Okay, in, in, in a new window, it, it increases the front fonts. Okay, so let me just uh, increase the fonts as much as I want, and then I move to a new window. References. Command plus. No, no, it is not working. Oh, it is working. Okay. I didn't know that. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, again, you want to uh, know the what I did change the Fortran compiler part. Okay. Uh, Vim, uh, make five. You see, just comment out this part. Just put a hash before F90C and F flags when I'm talking about I4. Okay. So these two should be flagged as flagged with hash. Okay. And you have to unflag or uncomment these two parts F90C equal to G Fortran and F flags equal to minus. O3 minus CPP. Everybody have been able to do that? Should I close it? Okay, I'm closing it. If uh, somebody needs more instruction, just let me know. I'm going to. Do it again. Okay. So it is compiling. Okay, now let's just see what are the different parts of the code. Okay, first of all, let me tell you that Bingo is called bispectra and non Gaussianity operator for any canonical single field model, at least the public version that is there. We, there only you can do the canonical one and single field model. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, the most general one that um, I haven't posted in the public repository yet is uh, can do for non-canonical two-field model as well. Uh, and uh, but uh, we are discussing only single-field model for inclusion. Uh, to begin with, we just need that. RK Suite it is a free software. Uh, you can find it in Netlib. You can download that. This is called uh, uh, Rungekuta Suite, which is uh, a differential equation solver. Okay, adaptive differential equation solver. Uh, and we need that because uh, uh, we, we need a first execution of the uh, solution to the partition equation. Another thing is that I have not shifted it to, into Python. I have done that, but it is nearly 100 times slower in Python. Unless you just write the Fortran routine and wrap it in Python. It is, uh, I mean, the, in, in, in Python, it is taking something like 200 seconds where here it works in one or two seconds. Okay. So that is the reason I haven't done that yet. Oh, okay. So then uh, in each model, for example, uh, each, let's see the directory structure. Okay. Uh, it has a directory called models. I am highlighting here. Okay. I ho hope that you are able to see that models, which is in blue line. Okay. So models have uh, uh, the model files. Let's go to the models. Okay. These are specimen, some model specimens that I have added. For example, this is Starobinsky model, this is Axion monodromy model, 
Okay, and this is Starobinsky's 1992 model. This axion monodromy model that came in recently, I think 2009 and or 2010, uh, it appeared uh, by Liam McAllister and Eva Silverstein. This is a string theory model of inflation, uh, string motivated model of inflation. This is punctuated inflation uh, that uh, 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 Professor Rajiv Jain and Professor Sriram Kumar et al. They have worked on this uh, for a long time. Uh, this is a power law inflation. Okay, so. Uh, and I discussed, I didn't discuss the power law inflation. Uh, I discussed the power law primordial power spectrum, but didn't discuss power law inflation. You can find it in Sri Ram Kumar's review, okay? The potential for the power law inflation. Uh, QP, STP, just uh, neglect the STP for now. Uh, just QP is quadratic potential when the V of phi is M square phi square and SFM is the small field model, okay? Uh, small field model, as I said, the quadratic potential is a large field model where the uh, uh, the duration for the uh, uh, for the inflation uh, that is uh, uh, for the, the uh, field the initial part of uh, initial value of the field and the final value of the field uh, the change between the initial and final value that is um, of the order of 16 uh, m plank right the f phi final was square root of 2 m plank and phi initial was uh, 16 m plank so it is of the order of 16 M plank the the phi i minus phi f, so that is a large field model. Uh, small field models uh, also is it are actually closer to the uh, M plank, so it is of the order of M plank or below M plank. All right. So there are different models of inflation. Also, just remember uh, in this small field model, I am using uh, this hilltop quartic model. In the fine, last to the final slide of my um, uh, lecture yesterday, you will be able to find the different model charted with their delta chi square and Bayesian evidences. Okay, uh, with respect to Planck, so you will be able to uh, see what models I am using. All right. Now, in each model, let's go to the model folder and go to the. Let's say I am using QPSTP. So. Let's see what is there in the make file. Okay, if you need to use a model, you just have to comment out that part and I'll comment out. Yeah, you have to comment out other parts and then uncomment that part. For example, I'm using QPSTP. I have removed this hash from the QPSTP. If I'm going to use power law, I'm going to comment this part and uncomment this one. Okay, that is how it works. And in Let's say I'm using QPSTP, quadratic potential. Let's see what are the folders, okay? Uh, sorry, what are the files inside that? One is this initial file. One is this parameters.f95, potential.f95, and theory params.f95. So, let's open FNL params.inf. Okay. Uh, it is discussed here. Everything uh, that you will be needing are discussed here uh, for the parameters that you will be needing to run the model. Uh, for example, the potential is given as half m square phi square times some step. Okay, that I'm going to discuss later, maybe if I have time, otherwise I'm going to skip it because this is not very important if you just want to understand the slow rule inflation. So half m square phi square, you know that this is the model of quadratic inflation. Uh, so, as you can see, I have added another part in the potential called 1 plus alpha tan hyperbolic. Yes, there is. I'm not able to remove that two hash. Delete key is not working, maybe. And then from that page, how are we going back to the original terminal page? What do you mean? I'm not able to remove the two hash. Delete key is not. No, just use the backspace. I mean, Uh, Dheeraj, it would be better with other uh, text editors rather than BIM, I think. Okay, you can open it in any text editor. I mean, you can open it if you are using yes. uh, Linux, you can use gedit. Um, uh, if you are using, uh, yeah, Linux means uh, Linux with uh, Ubuntu or Genome, you can use gedit. Or if you are using KDE, just use kwrite. If you are using Mac, then use, um, what am I using? Sublime text. Or atom, whatever you are familiar with, and if you are using Windows, open Notepad or something like that.
I'll have I'll have some water and be back in a minute. Okay, just in the meantime, try to uh, resolve this issue, Shobhan. Okay. And if anybody has other issues, please let me know. Okay, this is important that we can compile this code. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the uh, questions. Uh, if I, Srijita says, if I can, I'm, I can using i4, then it is showing me error, G4 turn error. No, no, if you're using i4, then it cannot say G4 turn error, right? Unrecognized command line option minus FTP. If you have, if you're using i4, uh, With G Fortran, okay. So if it is in G Fortran, it is working. Let's, uh, I mean, proceed with G Fortran. Okay. So, uh, how to use I four then? You can use I four then with the first without commenting out. Uh, okay. So then you can simply. I hope that you are able to see my terminal. Um, uh, next file. You can simply un comment out these parts and just uncomment the these two parts. 11 or later, I4 compiler, F90C, I4, minus X, F flex, minus 0, 3, 0, 3, minus OpenMP, just make a Q OpenMP, okay, or remove this OpenMP, remove this OpenMP just uh, to be simple, okay, to stay simple. Okay. Uh, WQ will quit Vim with the changes, yes. Uh, don't you have to quit with the changes? Yes, yes, of course you have to quit with the changes. Uh, uh, yes, Supradikta, I'm going to take some extra time today because yesterday I took uh, two hours. So I hope that it is not a problem uh, if I take extra time. Uh, I mean, the, I mean today's class was uh, supposed to be over by one hour, 30 minutes, but we had this high server problem. So I have to take the extra time. Um, Can you repeat the part after uncommenting QPSTP in the MIG file? No, no, no. Uh, uh, you, if it is in the QPSTP, you just use QPSTP because we are now going to use QPSTP. Okay. Uh, if you are using some different uh, uh, folder, uh, you can simply just uh, remove QPSTP and write that folder's name like SM or AMM, whatever the folder it is. Uh, it is you can simply write that folder name. All right. So Rahul, uh, are you able to uh, follow what I said? Okay, good, good. So uh, maybe we can proceed, right? Um, I hope that you have um, uh, GNU plot 
because I had created for this uh, workshop, I had created another um, uh, IPython directory, but that is that was directly in the Cypher Sci server, which is unfortunately dead today. I'll keep trying if it works. Uh, great. If it doesn't, we are going to compute in G Fortran. But anyway, I'm going to show you what the files are and then we can take it from there. Okay. Okay, very well. Uh, let's see what is in the FNL params.ini. Okay. Possibly uh, it is better. Maybe I open it in the some other format so that it is easier for you to follow. Stop share. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to now uh, simply share my whole screen. Share screen. Okay, I'm now sharing a portion of the screen. Uh, uh, whatever will come here, you will be able to see that. Are you able to see my screen now? Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, good. So I am in um, uh, Sublime, uh, I think. Uh, so here the syntaxes are highlighted, as you can see. Uh, so param1 is the mass parameter. Okay. So this is of the order of 7 into 10 power minus 6 in the Planck unit. So I am, you just see, if I just want to work with M square, phi square model, what I need to do is I just have to comment out this part and just put it zero. As you can see, if alpha equal to zero, then whatever it is there in the other part doesn't matter. So M square, phi square times one plus zero. Okay, so it is just M square, phi square model. Let's do that. Okay, open this uh, FNL params.ini inside the, uh, inside that folder inside that QPSTP folder and just uh, put zero in the params param2. Can we all do that? Let's do it. Okay. And let's not uh, worry about other parameters. Now start with slow roll. Okay. Start with slow roll means that you are starting the inflation with a slow roll initial condition. Uh, there are some other works uh, where you start with a non-slow roll. For example, you can uh, see different works by Will Hendley and uh, I think uh, uh, Carlo Pontaldi has some works. But most recent work is by uh, Raghavendra and uh, Sriram Kumar. Uh, you can find uh, kinetic initial conditions on, in uh, on inflation and uh, that works with uh, without the slow roll, okay? But for our analysis, we are going to start with the slow roll, okay? Uh, and the uh, uh, start value of the field is 16, right? I have written 16.5, uh, 16.5 where I am starting. So if you do not want to use kinetic initial condition, then you just put phi dot i to be, you don't mention phi dot i, okay? That means that it is d phi dt initial. Uh, multi-phase, don't worry about this. Sometimes inflation, uh, for example, punctuated inflation. Uh, so uh, as I said, uh, the model by uh, the model that was studied by Rajiv and uh, um, uh, Sriram Kumar et al. Uh, this is a punctuated inflation model. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, MSSM model actually, uh, coming from a high energy theory. And it was uh, authored by Ala Bardi and Anupam Majumdar et, uh, et al. And uh, where the inflation, uh, inflaton uh, basically uh, goes to a uh, inflection point and in that case uh, your inflation stop your epsilon for parameter your I, I discussed right the slow roll parameter when slow, slow roll parameter goes to one the inflation stop there the inflation stops because epsilon goes more than one then again restarts okay 
So it again restarts because it goes to the second part of the potential, which is again slow roll. So then it again comes down. So in those cases, multiphase might be needed. Otherwise, you do not have to worry about that. Just say multiphase equal to false. Pivot scale and in pivot scale are something. Uh, so why do you need a pivot scale? So you know that the inflation happened around 60 volts or something like that, right? But you need to solve for the primordial power spectrum. You remember I discussed that primordial power spectrum PSK is written phenomenologically as AS, the amplitude times K by K0 whole to the NS minus one. This K0 is the pivot scale where you are saying that this pivot scale has an amplitude of AS before and after the amplitude will change according to the tilt NS. So the pivot scale here also is implied here such, a, such that we say that uh, uh, there is a inherent uh, uh, um, inherent uh, 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 undeterminacy in saying that which mode left the Hubble radius at what time, right? K equal to AH, that gives you a time, I said, right? That is called Hubble exit. So different modes, they were sub-Hubble, okay? Let's just think that this is a, uh, this is constant. I hope you are able to see my mobile. This is constant. I think it is better to, no, it's fine. Um, uh, this is, constant this is the Hubble radius right h is nearly constant for exponential expansion and these are the modes I think you are able to see from that side okay this side is in the increasing time so inflation radiation dominated epoch so it will follow like this and then matter dominated epoch so the modes are leaving the Hubble radius like this this is the point where it is sub Hubble we impose bunch Davis vacuum initial condition this is when the mode is crossing the Hubble radius and this is when the mode is at super Hubble radius, okay? At super Hubble scales. So this point when it is exiting is called the Hubble exit K equal to AH. So we do not know there is an indeterminacy in understanding this initial scale factor. We are saying the initial scale factor is determined by assuming a particular scale leaving the Hubble radius at particular time. Let's say I'm saying given my uh, initial condition, the inflation is happening for, let's say, 100 defaults or 200 defaults. doesn't matter. There's no upper limit. But we are saying that 0 0.05 megaparsec inverse mode, okay, 0 0.05 megaparsec inverse mode leaves the Hubble radius 50 defaults before the end of inflation. Before the end of inflation, okay, 50 defaults before the end of inflation. If you have any questions, just let me ask, uh, Let uh, sorry, ask me and I will let, let you know uh, in greater detail. So it is that's how you determine this A i, A initial. If you do not want to determine A initial and you have to force the A initial, you say that, okay, I, by some other theory or by some uh, um, other argument, I'm saying that I know the A initial, I can uh, simply put the A initial there. I say that force A, and A initial equal to true, and then I give the value of A initial. In IC condition, you remember, I said that something is super Hubble and something is sub Hubble. Uh, some, uh, when the, some modes are at super Hubble scale and some modes are sub Hubble scale at a particular time. Uh, some, some conditions are super Hubble condition and some conditions are sub, uh, sub Hubble condition. So the, when K is very, very greater than H, this is called sub Hubble condition when Lambda is very, very less than that, okay? That means when your physical scale, scales, the perturbative scales, this Lambda are small, then the modes are inside the Hubble radius. So that is a particular point when K by H is much larger than unity. K by H equal to one, as I said, is Hubble exit. And K by H is very, very less than one is called super Hubble initial condition. Sorry, super Hubble uh, condition. That where the curvature perturbation freezes. So in those cases, we do not have to integrate up to the end of inflation. We just calculate at a super Hubble scales. So the initial conditions are given at a NIC condition, NI condition, okay, the N initial condition, where K by H is equal to 100. You can change it. If there are sub-Hubble evolution, you can, uh, I mean, if you if there are strong sub-Hubble evolution, you can even make it earlier, like 200 or something like that, okay? Uh, and super-Hubble initial condition are written uh, like K by H is equal to 10 power minus 5. Okay, now this is called uh, bispectrum. We are not going to talk about bispectrum, the three-point correlation function. I'm saying calc FNL equal to false. 
accuracy is another parameter we don't have to worry about it now by spectrum has different templates for example power spectrum is written in such a way where we are talking about we have a delta delta k1 plus k2 but by spectrum is determined in a triangle triangular shape is the k1 k2 k3 so it has different triangular shapes equilateral isoscales squeezed and scaling uh, so it was written as true but let's write it as false and just make this equilateral equal to true so uh, we do not need to calculate the bispectrum so we just keeping this equilateral true because the code needs to keep the equilateral equal to true in order to calculate the power spectrum all right so this is not needed in the bispectrum uh, sorry power spectrum log ki so i discussed the power spectrum from a uh, from a particular scale to part another scale so in cmb for planck the relevant scales are from 10 power minus 4 megaparsec inverse to 0.2 megaparsec inverse okay for the planck scales uh, where we have been able to resolve the large scale two small scales l equal to 2 to 2500 i think professor twin goes has discussed the primordial sorry the angular power spectrum you have seen the multiple moments and planck covers for temperature from 2 to 2500 so uh, here we are also calculating uh, from uh, that value to that value so here it is, for example, I have kept it as 10 power minus 5 to 10 power minus 1, means 0.1. You can increase or decrease it according to your need. Okay. Uh, and um, this doesn't, so there's a typo. It should be triangle. Uh, number of K, how many number of K points you want to evaluate. And that's it. And term is only needed for the bispectrum. Okay. So let's not worry about anything else open and uh, see potential here the potential is defined okay see very simply it is potential is 0 0.5 means half i square times mass square half m square phi square there's this step but as i said i have made this alpha to be zero so we don't need to worry about that this one needs potential potential prime that means dv d phi you remember for in order to calculate the uh, solve the uh, scalar field equation, you need dv d phi. You just de define dv d phi. For example, it is very simply m square times phi, right? It, you uh, just calculate. And v phi phi is m square. The other terms are not necessary here because we have already put alpha equal to zero. Let me see what else it contains. Theory param dot f90. It's very simple that we have defined pi and 2 pi don't have to worry about that open parameters okay and nshs condition although it is saying 10 per 10 per 10 to the 5 basically we are dividing that means k by h is equal to 1 by nshs condition okay we are going from k by h equal to 100 to 10 power minus 5 so subhubble to super hubble initial condition how many background steps we what would like to evaluate okay we need to solve the background equations phi double dot plus 3 h phi dot and v, uh, plus dv d phi equal to zero and uh, uh, let me tell you that this bingo is written in uh, n okay the e folds we are not using uh, the cosmic time or time or conformal time now if you open the uh, google drive let me check somebody shared here after me and the google drive link i'm trying to find out so that okay this one good yeah so bingo what it does is that it calls rk suite in order to solve this field evolution the background okay so it takes the initial condition as you have seen 16.5 i have talked about this fnl params dot ina potential it calls the potential, it calls this background evolution and uh, mode evolution. Sorry, mode evolution is going to come later. Uh, field evolution is going to give uh, inputs to the mode evolution. So the background equation, it solves. Now, let me go to the uh, terminal. Okay, I hope when I'm changing from one window to another window, you're able to follow. 
Um, so any file don't have to worry about that. This is just a code to uh, read from the uh, uh, INI files. Uh, interfacing is something that you need to, I mean, uh, need to interface different modules. Equation background dot F90. Okay, let's see what is there in the equation background dot F90. Go to two stages before and open equation. Okay, so it is just the two background equations. So you know it is a second. Uh, so it is a uh, uh, second order differential equation. So you can break it into two first order differential equation, and it is written in n. Okay, so it calls as you can see for different phi values. It calls this potential and potential prime. This is b means background v b and uh, phi b, and we are able to solve it. Okay, now let's open background. So we are using RK suite in order to solve this, uh, integrate this background equation. For example, here I'm solving that. I'm not going into much into the details, okay? Now let's just solve it. Now open Fiverr dot f 19 Let me just make a stop statement here so that I don't go beyond background at the initial stage. Okay. Make clean, make all, and then make run. Are you able to, can you read this notebook? No, this is a different one. Okay. okay. Everybody got what I had to, what I have said. Anyone who haven't understood till this part. Okay. Okay. Plots. MKDIR plots. Right. So you have to create a folder called plots. Just create the folder called plots. Then just make run. Have you been able to run it? Please. I mean, let me know. Who have been able to run it? Just write it here. It increases the confidence actually. Am I audible? Okay, you have run. Nilanjandev has run, okay. Okay, Srijit has run it. Good. Others, please ping here because if more people starts running it, basically, I mean, increases the confidence of the whole class. Okay, it, yes, it worked. Good, 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 good. I'm just waiting for 10 to 15 seconds just to see if most of the class have been able to do it. If not, uh, Okay, yeah, Raga says yet it runs. I thought that Raga will not be able to run it. I'm joking. Ultra Pindu, yes, it ran. Good, good. Okay. I think this is Ornopal, right? Um, okay. Now I'm just going to genu plot because my size server is not responding. None of them are working. But in the size server, if you just download, uh, you will find another in that inflation folder in the bingo folder. You will be able to locate a bingo plots or plot bingo dot ipynb. Uh, which has the Python commands to make all the plots. Okay, now let's see. Uh, see, now in the plots folder, you will be able to see these files. d5dn.dat, 
epsilon.dat, hubble.dat, phi.dat, phi nn.dat. Okay. Since everybody have been able to run it, let me just plot it. If one person have not been able to run it, even a single one, please write here immediately so that I can locate the error and can guide you appropriately. Appropriately. I am getting this error. No, no, yeah, tell me. Oh, no, no, no. Just MKDIR plots. As I said, uh, you see, I, I also got this error, right? Uh, you have to create a plots folder. See this one MKDIR plots. Then run. Yeah, please. This, these are something that we, that we need to discuss because otherwise we will not be able to. Uh, I mean, everybody will not be able to run because these are common problems, right? Onuva, is this problem solved? You just MKDR plots and then immediately make run. Now it's running. Thank you. Okay, so it is running. You have made. Okay, it, it should uh, finish in 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 uh, less than a second. I think 0.5 seconds it, it took. Uh, you have made this calc FNL equal to false in that INI file. Otherwise, it is going to run. It is going to run for the full by spectrum. Okay, please check that in the QPSTP. Just make sure that the calc FNL is false and scalene is false and equilateral is true. Okay. Let's see the field evolution. Okay. So this is phi. You remember we have started with 16.5, right? And phi ends here. Remember, we have discussed this phi f is square root of MPL, square root of 2 MPL, means 1.414. Here it is 1.0. Why? Because we are using a Hubble slow roll parameter equal to 1 as the end condition of inflation. Okay, it has worked out for Anubhav. Um, so you see, if you have GNU plot or any other plot, if you prefer Python, just do it in Python because I had the, uh, I mean, uh, GNU plot is easier to use. I mean, if you just uh, want a temporary plot, uh, you don't have to write scripts. I hope that you are able to get this right now. Now let's see what happens to D phi dn. Okay, that means D phi dt. I have transferred it as D phi dn. You see, this is called slow roll and phi dot is very, very less. So phi dot square is very, very less than the potential. So it stays nearly constant. At some point of time, it accelerates and goes high and it is ending inflation. All right, just check. Check this. Now, let me just open this one and see what we plan to do. So we are working with large field model, right? Then we'll change the mass and check the effect. Then we'll go to the small field model. Uh, let me go to the genu plot. Guys, please ping because if you are able to do it, then I'm going to, I mean, move with a slightly higher pace. Okay, got the plots, good. I think there is something called make plots as well. If you make, you do the make plots, it let, let me see if it works.
if you have genu plot then just you just Let's see what is the command to make version plot load plot stuff or oh, make fix fix okay uh, since we do not have i'm getting small deep around 14. ah alpha alpha equal to zero the param 2 equal to zero in fnl params dot ini just put params 2 is equal to zero okay that we are going to discuss in the end Okay, so if you um, are able to do this, then I think uh, some plots have been created. Actually, due to server issue, I missed many of the steps. Which server issue? Zoom server issue. Okay. Uh, you can, okay. One thing is that you can simply go to the, okay. I think this uh, session is being recorded. So you can, when it is shared, you can have a look. But I would like you to have a look at the readme file of the, of the GitLab, GitHub uh, of the Bingo. Okay. Uh, Bingo software. So you go there. And have a look at the software. Uh, the the package has a very good uh, uh, self-explanatory thing, and uh, uh, it is updated. And uh, yeah, the Q Q OpenMT is not updated, but otherwise it is updated. So have a look at that. And if you have any questions, just uh, write back to me or write back to the Slack channel, okay? Because since many students are working on the same issue, if there are issues, then uh, people will be able to communicate and uh, solve immediately, okay? Okay, good. Uh, so now if you make make plots, if you have genu plot, it simply creates all the plots. Okay, let's uh, just open the plots. Uh, I mean, uh, it would have been much easier if I had the access to that you know, Sci server. Uh, okay, now open d5dn.eps. Why does it open? Okay. As I said, this is uh, a d5 dn and uh, phi is a function of phi, uh, I mean, the velocity of the field as a function of n. Okay. Now let's see epsilon. This is the slow roll parameter. Okay. As I said, slow, okay. Uh, can somebody write what uh, slow roll parameter? Uh, I mean, what, what should be its magnitude of the slow roll parameter? Epsilon. What, I mean, whether it is 10, 100, 1, 0.1, 10 power minus 2. We discussed it yesterday, right? Very, very less than 1. Good. Let's see. See, it starts from here and it goes to 1. This 1 is where the scalar field rolls fast and the inflation ends. You have a potential. Okay, you have a m square, phi square potential. It starts rolling slowly and it comes down. Yeah, 10 per minus 2 is fine. 10 per minus 2, we'll, we'll see. It, de it depends on the model. Basically, it is very, very less than 1. Okay. Uh, so, 10 per minus 2 will definitely work. So, you see, it is coming down and uh, uh, and at the bottom of the potential, it gains some speed and at the bottom, it oscillates. Okay. It oscillates and there the preheating occurs. Okay. The thing that happens before the reheating. Uh, parametric resonance so preheating occurs and uh, but we are not going to that we are just stopping the evolution when epsilon is greater than or equal to one 
okay as you can see it one it reaches one the cell the evolution is stopped and as you can also see that uh, d5 dn if you just open the d5 dn it is going to be it is okay bingo make run system cannot accept the time entered enter the new time okay just run this line bingo okay because time may not work in yeah can you check this one just bingo two dot out models gps if it works please for sharing yes sir okay good let me just plot explicitly the epsilon we'll see the magnitude right let me go to the log scale as you can see if i go to log scale it is of the order of 0.01 okay and what did we discuss what is the tensor to scalar ratio in terms of slow roll parameters if i have epsilon as the slow roll parameter as you can see it is nearly constant up to here where basically the uh, planck is uh, planck cosmological scale is located can you tell me point 9 sorry point 9 why in terms of slow roll parameter if it is epsilon then what is r in terms of epsilon r equal to 12 epsilon no no it is 16 epsilon h okay 16 epsilon h so what is what will be the epsilon here if it is 0 0.01 16 epsilon h is 0.16 right so r equal to 0 0.16 and the bounds bounds from plan Blank 18 plus BK 15 bicep cake BK 15 is less than 0 0.057 if I'm not ready now in at 95% confidence level. Okay. So here R equal to 0 0.16. So the model is ruled in or ruled out quadratic potential model is ruled in or ruled out what can you say please write here i mean whatever you think please please write right here let's make it an interactive session okay guys i'm going to take a little bit more time i know that i have crossed two hours but uh, uh, if it is not a problem, if there is a problem, uh, either uh, Superdicta, please let me know, or uh, the moderator, please let me know. I can stop. Or if you are fine with taking, fine with me taking fifteen more minutes, I can proceed. Hi, Dheeraj. Yes. Yes. So I think you can take up to uh, two p.m. because the next session is going to start at two thirty. So half an hour would be good enough for having lunch and etc. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Basically, I would like to finish this part. Uh, uh, yeah, so that we can start CMB. Uh, oh, sure. No issues. Thank you. Okay, Srijeta said it is ruled out. Okay, so you understand. So R equal to 0 0.16 means it is higher, much higher than the bound, which is at 95% confidence limit. It is nearly 0 0.06, right? So R is 0 0.16 is the uh, uh, m square phi square models tensor to scalar ratio. I am not calculating tensors here directly, but you can also simply make changes in the perturbations uh, uh, where uh, you add few other equations, just the Mukhanov Sasaki equation for tensors, and you will be able to get the results. All right. So now let's move to the uh, perturbations, scalar perturbations. Okay, let me go to this part. Uh, where I had made stop. Yeah, I just removed the stop command. C D double dot make all. So 
sorry. Okay, make round. See, as I said, it is 0.9 seconds. So uh, I mean, that's the reason I I haven't circulated the Python node. So then again, make fix. Okay. So don't worry about this error because we are not calculating FNL. So it is saying that we are, I'm not able to find the FNL uh, values. So by spectrum, we are not calculating. Okay. So which is beyond the scope of these lectures. So let's uh, just see what is there in the power spectrum. Open plots. Yes, dot txt. Oh, no. Plots. So this is the, this is how the power spectrum looks. Okay, now let me. Got. Okay, so this is the primordial power spectrum as a solution to the Mukhanov Sasaki equations. Okay, so let me go to the uh, code. Uh, okay, so let me go to the structure first. Okay, here. So background is evaluated, background gives you the uh, initial condition. From initial condition, you can understand that initial conditions are this bunch division vacuum initial conditions. So you can uh, calculate this mode evolution. You can uh, solve for the mode evolution, and uh, that basically solves the perturbation equation and get the primordial power spectrum. How this is done? Let me just open not this one. Sorry. Let me just open this part. Open. Uh, Equation part revision dot equation part revision dot So both the background quantities are there. Since this is adaptive, I have to also write the background quantities here, although it is solved um, uh, in the first place. But then you, when you solve it, uh, adaptive means that it doesn't keep the same points uh, in the in the evolution. It basically jumps depending on the accuracy. Okay. So uh, you remember the what is the r r equation r double prime plus twice z prime by z r prime plus k square r equal to zero and we are solving that so these are the four equations for the curvature perturbation so why there are four because curvature perturbation initial condition remember it is uh, vk was uh, equal to one by the bunch division vacuum initial condition was one by square root of two k e power minus i k eta. Okay, so it can be uh, it it not it, it it it. Okay, I shouldn't say it can be. It is a complex quantity, and mod of r k square gives you the power spectrum multiplied by k q by twice pi square. So, uh, as you can see, the power spectrum. Uh, is uh, related to mode of RK square. So it is imaginary. So two imaginary second order differential equation, if you break them into first order differential equation becomes not imaginary. Two complex second order equation, if you break them into uh, first order differential equation, it becomes four. So we are solving four first order differential equation here. And the other two are basically the background equation. Okay. So you, you can see the Z prime by Z is written here, K square by AH. K, uh, h square are written here so this is simply the, the, the these are simply the equations that we are going to solve and when we solved we found that the primordial power spectrum is nearly scale invariant as you can see that it starts from 3 into nearly 3 into 10 power minus 9 right it ends around here so 2 2 into 10 power minus 9 so there is a change in the amplitude over the perturbation scales and let me just open the EPS file. Okay, 
So you can see this is this k is in megaparsec inverse, and this is the power spectrum, and it is not constant. So that means that this is not uh, so this is not uh, uh, a scale invariant one. So it is a nearly scale invariant one, but has a tilt of 0.96. Okay, uh, so you can see that we have solved a model of inflation right from the first principle numerically m square phi square model and compare uh, and basically uh, obtain the um, primordial power spectrum from there so let me check what is the uh, prime what does the primordial power spectrum looks with the analytical formalism okay so let let me just uh, uh, define this fx equal to as times remember k by k naught to the ns minus one ns is how much the best fit i said the sweet spot is 0 0.96 and uh, the as the coban ampl amplitude is nearly 2.1 around point when k equal to k0 then the amplitude is 2.1 e means 10 power minus 10 power minus 9 okay now let's say we plot fx oh, okay 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 it is in x right so k0 and then i say k0 equal to 0 0.05 megaparsec inverse so i plot on top of that and let me just get a to plot it again see this is what people use but when they don't want to solve the uh, perturbation equation all right so this is the analytical for format that one uses we are going to see it in the cmb class how it is uh, used in cam and how it is uh, convolved with the transfer function to get the angular power spectrum that you have already calculated using ANA first uh, from the CMB maps uh, in uh, Duin's lecture. Okay, so you can see uh, that this is very close. Okay, so that uh, the model of inflation m square phi square is giving you the amplitude and the tilt, the desired amplitude and the tilt. Uh, uh, for any uh, and for for uh, the scalar power spectrum uh, that Planck uh, uh, Planck desires, okay. Uh, but again, the scalar power spectrum is in agreement with the data, but the tensor power spectrum is not because it has a higher tensor to scalar ratio. It has a higher tensor amplitude, so it is ruled out by the BB data from bicep cake and Planck joint analysis. So if you do a joint data analysis, you will see that it is ruled out, and the delta chi square is listed in the uh, plank paper which i had uh, cut out and pasted in my last lecture okay i hope this is uh, understandable uh, now let me go to i'm not going to solve um, uh, most of them uh, so the thing is that uh, tensor to square ratio explore kinetic initial initial conditions on phi and phi n you just have a look at those uh, uh, at um, i mean uh, after the lecture okay so these are you can just take it as uh, assignments okay small field model i'm just going to discuss and these are something that uh, the, are the model with features that means if you have model where it is not slowly rolling you have a model where the, your uh, where your parameters are uh, uh, allowing your where your potential has oscillations then the primordial power spectrum is not strictly scale invariant sometimes when you compare it with the data you get better fit to the data okay i'm just i'm not going to discuss that in this lecture or in the next lecture okay so that is not the main is just not the main essence of cmb i'm just going to discuss one slide uh, um, uh, in the next lecture as a cmb anomaly okay so there i'm going to discuss in for a few minutes uh, let's go to the make file and just take another model okay 
SFM STP. I make it commented and then okay, let's So what you need to do is that you need to go to another folder open and uh, you go to bingo 2.0 plots and go to models models sfm stp and then you just go to fnl params.ini okay and here you can also find open the potential This potential is V0 times one minus phi by mu to the P. This is a small field model. If P equal to four, then it is called hilltop quartic potential. So it is a hilltop model of inflation. Okay. Uh, you have also seen that in one of the, uh, uh, one of the potential in the list. So you can simply use that. Now I have to make clean here, make all. And simply make run. Oh, sorry. I haven't changed anything in the folder file. Okay, I and I file. I put the height of the step is zero. Uh, here also, I I'm multi multiplying by with a step function alpha. I'm putting alpha to be zero, and and calc if and else false, equilateral true, scaling false. If you change INI file, you don't have to make uh, again. Okay, program is completed. So make fix. Okay, so here the power spectrum. Let's see what is the power spectrum. See, this was the old power spectrum, and this is the new power spectrum. It's the same. So both the models have the same scalar power spectrum, but let's see what is the tensor to scalar ratio here okay let's plot epsilon h plots epsilon dot dot okay see what is the ifs of the order of epsilon 0 0.001 right and for m square phi square what was the order of epsilon 0 0.01 so what is the tensor to scalar ratio here if it is 16 x 16 um, epsilon h Please make it interactive. Please write it down. Even if it is very simple, please write it down so that I mean uh, you understand what is going on. Are you guys there or I am disconnected? No, we are here. Okay, okay. So you are able to follow it, right? I mean, what I am saying. Yes, yes. So yeah, what so, of the value of epsilon here? I just didn't. Yeah, yeah, it is. You can see that, right? Epsilon value is it very small? Is it? I mean, uh, I'm I'm enlarging the view. Let me just. Yes, yes. I can help. I can see it now. Yes. Point double zero one, right? Earlier it was 0 0.01. Remember, earlier in the m square phi square case, it was 0 0.01. So you see different models, how different models behave. This is a problem. I made a full screen and then. Okay, 0 0.016, exactly. Okay, Srijita so says I cannot produce ps dot txt. Why? Uh, it, you are getting this saying that the program is completed. 0 0.07 real is, is, is are you are you getting that? All data sets are cleared, created. Okay, so ps dot txt is there, right?
that is strange you are getting this command that the program is completed the program is completed you are getting that right no that is you are not seeing the program is completed then you have made a stop statement background of the model has been evaluated okay then you have put, uh, put a stop statement somewhere in the driver.f90 when we, I, I did that in that um, uh, discussion initially where i was just doing the background evolution or what is the error message that you are seeing after the background of the model has been evaluated what is the error message that you are seeing just to put it there yeah put us you, you have put a stop so just uh, remove that stop make all and run again okay so here you see both the cases small field and the large field model has the same scalar power spectrum but the vector pass sorry the tensor power spectrum is are different in these two cases in one case the tensor power spectrum has higher amplitude which gives a tensor to scalar ratio to be 0.16 which is re rejected now here the tensor power spectrum gives a tensor to scalar ratio of 0 0.016 which is very very well within the plank 18 plus bk 15 this bound that i'm highlighting in the chat box i hope that you are also able to see my chat box right so uh, so this is very well within this confidence quantity so we can only see the terminal probably oh okay then in go in the chat box where i have said bounds from plank 18 plus bk 15 is less than 0 0.057 okay just that line and just before that i have said r equal to 0 0.16 that is for m square phi square model large field model and for a small field model this is uh, 0 0.16 so it is well within that uh, you when you are when you are saying that you are just seeing the terminal when i'm opening the genu plot you are able to see that right or even that yes, you are not previous, able to... no previously i was i i could see that but now is there I any genu i haven't made any now i can i can only see the terminal now let me see uh, I... you are able to see the genu plot yes yes i can see i can see yes now here the here what is the change in the phi is from nearly 7.5 to 14.5 so it is nearly 7 m plan so it is much lesser or at least twice lesser than the large field models okay and if you are talking about the inflation the cmb uh, only the change is of the order of uh, nearly how much uh, 7 to this is about 10 e folds to uh, 20 volts all right so the change is of the order of one implant but basically uh, for the full evolution also it is from 7.5 to 14.5 all right good and here also if you see okay another thing that i didn't show is that the hubble how what is the hubble parameter okay see the hubble parameter is nearly constant right the hubble parameter is nearly constant so that means that it is inflating the universe is inflating a dot by a is nearly constant of the order of 1.3 10 power minus 5 good now the final thing that i would like to show you uh, the, i have already said that these will be for your uh, assignments so it is the effect of mu means that here you can change this uh, phi x by mu in the potential of small field model and you keep on doing that basically i mean what we are um, doing here is basically we are solving the model uh, what uh, i mean in a, in a in a in a full analysis what you do is that you solve this model you put it in cam a software called cam which i'm going to discuss in the next two lectures and then you solve it and then make give it to cosmo mc so that it calculates the angular power spectrum and then compares with the Planck likelihood that has the Planck angular power spectrum data inside and then you can get a constraints on m, m the parameters of this uh, model for example if it is m square phi square model then you will get a constraints of m 
constant on m the mass of the scalar field if it is small field model then you will get a constant on v0 okay that's how it is done um okay uh, explore the sub -hub, super hubble and sub hubble scale just change nic condition etc if there are any questions just write back to me it doesn't matter whether it is uh, you write back to me after few days after the workshop is over if you write back to me in email i will be able to respond okay there is no problem uh, probably at after the um, uh, workshop this uh, slack channel will not be there but my email you can email me at any point of time uh, okay and uh, intermediate fast roll or let's say i i, I work with a string theory model now, okay Let's say I, I take interest in string theory and just file open make file. Yeah. So this is I'm making it commented and I'm commenting commenting out axion monodromy model AMM. All right. Now AMM is a string theory model which has a linear potential. Let me just show you the what the potential looks like. File open models AMM potential. potential is alpha times phi x. Okay, phi x is just the simple phi. It means alpha phi plus beta cosine. So it has a cosine modulation. It has a cosine. Uh, uh, modulation in the potential. So the potential is oscillatory. What I need to do here is that you have the all, all the FNL parameters dot ini and then you simply here you see I'm using NIC condition to be 250 because it has a strong sub Hubble evolution. Calc FNL false, scaling false and equilateral true. See, I am going to explore the effect of num k, number of k. Okay, this is again related to the uh, observing power. What is the resolution of your observation, etc. It's not exactly resolution because we are talking about large scale and small scale in there, and here we are talking about how much uh, we are basically resolved in between each l, whether we need beam spectrum or not. For example, for example, if it is uh, ground based experiments, you cannot resolve all the l's very well as compared to the uh, full sky surface okay uh, so make clean i'm going to stop within a few minutes make all simply make run make fix Let's see here if we are we are taking some more amount of time maybe 1.61 seconds otherwise it was taking like point, uh, uh, seven seconds because it has oscillations the adaptive code needs to keep the accuracy and solve it in uh, greater detail okay uh, so open plots power spectrum power spectrum what it is see the primordial power spectrum has oscillations but the thing is that we are not able to resolve all the oscillations what i'm going to do now is just come will come here and make it 500 or 600 let's say okay it's going to take six seconds but that's fine make run it took three seconds make fix okay let's see let's plot again you see these are the oscillations in the power spectrum that you, you can expect if you have uh, models like axion monodromy model okay so these are the oscillations that you can expect and they lead to an improvement in fit to the data so if there are outliers in the data anomalies in the data these kind of models can help in uh, addressing those anomalies in a greater detail okay all right so these are just examples of uh, uh, the bingo and the power spectrum etc so okay so i think now i am going to stop uh, let me stop the screen share right now. stop share okay any questions 
I'm sorry, I took much longer than expected. I'm really sorry. So any questions if you have, I mean, uh, now you have to go for lunch, uh, I believe. In that case, please write to Slack channel or write to me. I will prefer if you write to Slack channel during the workshop because other students will be able to see your questions, okay? But please get your hands dirty with this, okay? And uh, if, you, some, if you will see that if some student is not able to solve that, other student will be able to solve that. And uh, you can have a mutual interaction where you can be able to solve the whole thing. I'll be able to help that. I uh, regularly check this uh, Slack channel and uh, I'll be able to help you out. If you do not have G4 Tron, go to the Slack size uh, server. I hope that it will not be down for the whole day. And then we can, uh, you can also check all this. There is a Python notebook, as I said, inside the bingo directory to plot, especially to plot this uh, uh, outputs from bingo. If you do not like GNU plot, just use that Python plot, okay? So, okay. So, Supradigra, if you want to take questions uh, for two, three minutes, I am available. Otherwise, uh, we can, uh, I mean, we can just close the session. And, uh, it is up to you. Okay. So, we had quite a brainstorming session today. Thanks to the participants and uh, especially to Viraj. Okay.